Hey, hey, hello, I'm Krokan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Jack. Yet another Crowcast where I pick a game, I play it for a week, and then I'll talk about it. This week's game is Balloon 5 for the NES. It was made in 1987, the PAL version, developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and HAL Laboratories, and published by Nintendo. And also, there'll be spoilers up ahead, just so you know. But first, a little backstory. The last week I was on Twitch watching a guy, a Swedish guy called Hamish Strange, and he has this thing on his channel where he revisit old games to get revenge on them, but technically this, this is like the second turn of it, like the second season, so it's like a re-revengeance thing, uh, which I think is kind of funny, but he played a lot of NES games and Balloon Fight was one of them, so I went on a bathroom break and I just saw like the C gameplay of it, like game C, and that got me intrigued, I wanted to know more about this game, so that's why I played it this week. So as you start up the game you had three different options. Game A which is one player, game B which is two players, and C which is like a, a version of Flappy Birds if that makes sense. You have like spikes on the screen and you have to just collect balloons. I think there are 50 of them. But I choose game A to start with so the whole premise about this game is to pop your enemy's balloons before they pop yours and you fall to the ground. So you have like two balloons I believe, two red balloons, so you can take two pops and then you're out of it. So this game has an interesting mechanic, when you pop up on the right si side of the screen you end up on the left side, so there are some tactical elements even through like the bonus stages. So if you pop an enemy's balloon they will slowly descend to the ground via parachute and then you have to knock him out. It's, it's a bit like Super Mario Bros, you know that classic game where you try to uh, kill the turtles, <laughs> you know, you you yeah, something like that. And some enemies that drop down on the ground, they actually refill the balloons and there are different kind of enemies. I think the yellow enemies are more aggressive than others and they are quickly on their feet and getting their balloons ready again. And another funny thing <laughs> is that if you go, if yourself go too close to the water or if an enemy gets too close to the water, there's like a big fish that just eats them and uh, it, you lose a life. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of funny. I was not prepared for it. I bounced around the place and I end up like a little too close to the water and then I got eaten by a piranha or a big fish. And a bit into the game there's like a bonus stage where balloons come out of pipe and you pop them. I think there are 25 of them. It just goes to the overall score and you, you know, earn extra lives I think. And also some levels have balloons that you can pop or not balloons but bubbles that you can pop and you get, get like 500 points each. And some levels have like clouds that shoot lightning. Uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of a funny thing. I wasn't, just, you know, expecting anything. It's like a dark cloud and you just shoot lightning if you get close to it, I guess. So later in the game, there are these platforms that are idle, but once you touch them, they spin you all over the place. So this game is kind of finicky when it comes to controlling your balloon fighter. You kind of tap the A or B button to, you know, uh, ascend. And if you don't, you know, press the button, you kind of descend really quickly. So it has this mechanic where you need to pop the enemy's balloons. And it's kind of finicky, as I said, but once you get down to it, and it's kind of a fun game to play. I never got frustrated playing a single game, even if I lost, because, I mean, I had fun all the time. And that's exactly what games are supposed to be. You're not supposed to be frustrated, angry, and uh, all over pissed, I guess. And this is just a fun little game, you know, sherpy music and everything. So gameplay, pop the enemy's balloons before they pop yours, that's about it. Control, the d-pad moves the character around and if you press or tap the A or B button you fly up, you ascend and the start button pauses. Graphics, 8-bit charming graphics, what more do you want, right? So when you look at the title screen, the game is dated to 1984, but I think that's a reference to the arcade game because the PAL version came up much later in like 87. So it's a, it's a very old game, it looks kind of crude, you know, basic. One of the, I guess one of the more, the first generations of games. But you know, it's fine. If you look at a balloon, you know exactly what it is. If you look at an enemy or a cloud or, you know, it makes sense what you're looking at, I guess. Sound and music. Hirokazu Tanaka made the music for this game. And it's okay, you know, very sharpy, very happy music. Yeah, that, that's about it, you know, very, very nice soundtrack. Easter egg secrets and glitches. I couldn't find any uh, just by looking out. Usually there's like a code you can punch in at the title screen to earn extra lives and whatnot, but this game doesn't have any, not to my knowledge at least. In conclusion, I wrote, yes, it's a fun little game that it's not even frustrating. It's just fun to play. 
It's a simple premise. You break the enemy's balloons before they break yours. Very simple. Uh, so I don't really have anything bad to say about the game. You can beat a game in about 40 to 35 minutes if you know what you're doing. It's, it's kind of a long game actually, but you can beat it in one sitting. And I also looked up some speed runs, and those are kind of crazy how they manage to like pop the balloons as quickly as possible. So I think there's like a, what was the time, like 5.49 or something, but there are people that could do it like much quicker, which is kind of impressive in my opinion. So anyway, thanks for listening and for watching and take care.